Hi guys, it's Sam and today if you're perplexed by bridging, stick around because I am going to be going through six different types of bridging that you can use to further your property journey. <laughs> Property is about patience. Hi guys, thanks very much for sticking around. Before we get started talking about the six different types of bridging finance that you can get, do make sure to click the subscribe button and also hit the bell so that you're notified of all future videos. Now, here are the six different types of bridging that we're going to go through today. That's six different types. So number one is all about acquisition. So how are we actually going to purchase um, properties using bridging? Number two is market, open market value bridging is what I call it. So it's based on the open market value. Number three is a refurb bridge, um, slightly different to a standard bridge. Number four is what I call a delayed completion bridge. So a way of being able to purchase a property based on an uplifted value, not necessarily the purchase price. Number five is a bridge that is cross collateralized across multiple properties. So stick around for that one. And the number six, the last one is development finance, which we probably could have an entire video all to itself, but it is makes up one of the six different types of bridging. So let's kick it off. Number one was acquisition bridging. So for this, this, this could be that you are purchasing, um, purchasing a property. It could be that you're purchasing a piece of land. It could be that you're purchasing a property at auction. But the key here is that the, um, the is that it's just based on the lesser of the value of the property or the purchase price. So in this way, it's very, very, very similar to a mortgage. So as I said, it's going to be the lesser of the value or the um, or the purchase price, whichever is is the lower of those two. And as I said, this is this will be used primarily to actually just purchase a property. Often these are used when you need to purchase a property quickly. Okay, so that's number one, acquisition and acquisition bridge. Number two is an open market value bridge. This is a bridge, it's very similar to acquisition bridging. It is, you know, it's it's used to purchase a property um, and it is going to be to, you know, cover you for the, the purchase costs. But what the difference is, is we're actually basing this off of what the open market value is. So remember I said on the acquisition, what we're looking at is it's a uh, it's based on the lower of, of the value of the purchase price. This one is based on the open market value. So if you're buying at 70 grand, for example, but the open market value is 100, then we can possibly get a percentage of the open market value. It probably won't be able to go above a certain percentage of the purchase price as well, possibly 85, 90, something like that. But it just means you need to put a little bit less money in if that's going to cause you a problem. I always recommend that you put in as much as you possibly can in terms of your own money out of your own pocket because that leads to, to, to better rates and lower cost of funds. But if you need to be able to put less money in, then this is a great method uh, and a great type of bridging to use for that. So number three, number three, um, it's a refer bridge. Now this um, actually, I'm, then I'm kind of, you're gonna start seeing I'm kind of doing these in a particular order, but this kind of then builds off of uh, number two, the open market value bridge, because what we're now looking at is a bridge that's kind of based on the future value of, of the property to a certain extent. Um, and let me let, let me sort of break down what I mean by that. So um, if you're purchasing a property that you're actually going to refurbish, and we're talking about a light refurb here, we're not talking about, you know, knocking down loads of walls, building an extension, all that kind of stuff. We're talking about new kitchen, new bathroom aesthetics throughout, maybe a rewire, that kind of stuff. But it really is what we would call a light refurb. Now, there are certain lenders that will look at this and they'll say, we'll lend you a certain amount day one. And then what we will do is we will lend you, um, a, you know, a certain amount to contribute towards the cost of the refurb. Now, what they'll do is because the refurb isn't going to take very long, it's different to development finance, which is what we'll come on to later on. Insofar as, you know, you know, they're not going to be giving you tranches of funds um, throughout the build because it's only going to take you maybe six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. So what they do is they just build this into your day one um, loan amount. And again, very similar to the open market value bridge. What lenders will look at is only is capping this at a certain 
um, loan to value of the purchase price, basically. So typically we'd be looking at about 85% of the purchase price. So in, in the lender's mind, they're lending you 75% towards the purchase and a further 10% um, of the purchase price towards the bill costs. So day one, you will get a lump sum of 85% to be able to contribute towards the um, the purchase price. Now, of course, you know, you, uh, you're you still going to need the money to do the refurb. You're still going to need that additional 15%, probably slightly more when we sort of look at the difference between a gross and a net loan. But it does mean that you will be able to reduce the amount that you need to put in. Now, a little bit of a disclaimer on that. The type of lenders that do this kind of um, this, this type of bridge usually take a little bit longer than the average bridge um, bridger does. So these aren't quick, snappy bridges. I wouldn't recommend you necessarily use these for auction purchases, for example, or whether there is uh, when there is a, a kind of a, should we say, a deadline that we need to hit. So you need to allow a little bit of extra time for these type of bridges just because the lenders that do them are just a bit slower than they're not the quickest in the market. So that was number three. That was um, it was a light refurbishment bridge. Now, Moving on to number four then, which is what I call a sort of a delayed completion bridge. This is actually quite similar to a, in terms of the thought process behind a refurbishment uh, bridge. And I'll tell you why, because it's still going to be kind of based on the end value. Now, many of you that are watching might have heard the term assisted sale or delayed completion. Um, this is where you might be looking to purchase the property to flip possibly, but you, what you want to do is you want to maybe do the work to the property um, before actually completing on it. So you might be looking at, uh, so you've got an agreed price, for example, of 100,000, you're gonna do 20 grand's worth of work to it, and then it's gonna be worth 160 at the other end. What you what you want is you kind of, you wanna be able to do the, do the work um, and then get a valuation so that you know what the open market valuation of the property is gonna be post, um, post works and get a bridge based on that, but still pay the um, the purchase price. So, so as I said, if the purchase price was 100,000, for example, you still wanna pay that purchase price of 100,000, but you might want the bridge to be based off an open market value of, of 160, so you can put less money into that particular deal. Now, there aren't a lot of lenders that do it and don't structure it in this way, but if, we, if we're actually flipping, if you're gonna be refinancing, it doesn't work quite as well, but if we're gonna be flipping, it works really, really well. And all that we do is we get everything set up at the very, very beginning. You get access to the property on exchange, you get keys, you know, you've got an agreement in place with the vendor that you actually are gonna be able to, I suppose, get in access to the property and go and bring your builders in and do, you know, a whole refurb. Um, and then you will complete the purchase and then you will sell it on yourself in a sort of delayed completion scenario. Or if it's an assisted sale, then you're gonna be, um, you know, it's basically spitting the profits on the uh, on the sale with the with the vendor. But um, this this type of sort of delayed completion bridge really works more on the delayed completion, not really on the assisted sale. But it's a similar principle. So I just wanted to make you aware of the terminology so that you knew the difference. But this is basically, as I said, where we're going to be agreeing a purchase price. We're going to exchange. We're going to get a uh, bridging lender lined up that is going to take a put a valuer in just before completion so that we know the open market value, we're gonna base the, uh, the bridge off of that. Um, and so it just means less money going into the deal from yourself. And it means you can flip it on say two, three months down the line and you can make your profit quite easily without putting as much money into the deal, which is great. So that was number four, delayed completion. Number five, again, you're seeing, sensing a bit of a theme. This is uh, what I would call a cross collateralized bridge. So. All of a lot of these bridges, it's all about, and these are the inquiries I get the most, which is where people are struggling to put get get the funds together to put down deposits. So they're looking at creative ways in order to basically not have to put down as much of it as a deposit. Now, a cross collateralized bridge essentially is when you have a um, instead of putting money into the deal as your deposit, you would use equity in another property in order to put down a deposit and cover the entire purchase price. So this works really for more experienced uh, property portfolio investors. 
already have a portfolio um, in place and you might have some equity in one or more other property that we can utilize to contribute towards the purchase. So this often really only works when you've got maybe 50% equity in another property, um, but uh, that means that we can get, say, a certain percentage based on the purchase price of the, of the property you're acquiring. And then the difference, it might be 30, it might be 25, it might be 45% um, would come from equity of another property by way of a second charge. So if you if you haven't got any mortgage on there um, or any funds on that on this other property, on this second property, you know, it's just gonna be a first charge. But if you do have um, a mortgage on there, typically we only want that to be at 50% so that we can utilize 50% equity by way of a second charge. So it's what we call kind of a blended uh, bridge. So it's it's a part first, part second charge, but it's cross collateralized over both of them. So it's just one bridging loan. Um, and so that's what we call a cross collateralized bridge. And that will allow you to use equity in your portfolio to cover the deposit rather than taking money out of your back pocket and actually putting down a cash deposit. So that's our fifth type of a bridge. Now our sixth, now originally I did say five when I put this out onto social media recently um, uh, to sort of advertise the fact that this video is coming out. But I've added a bonus, number six, which is development finance. Now I could do, as I said, a whole video just on development finance, but for today's, for the purpose of today's video, how this is a type of bridge is that you, effectively it's a little bit similar to the light refurbishment, but it takes it on another stage. So this is really when you're doing a larger scale um, project. So it might be that your bill costs are 30,000 or above. Um, and what we do is we'll have a certain amount of money um, that we would borrow on the purchase price. So it might be 70, 75, 65%, something like that. And then we would also get tranches of funding, stage payments of funding that will, that will be drawn down to cover the cost of the works as well. Now, the way in which a lender will actually um, look at this is they'll, we'll, we'll, the terminology is loan to GDV. So L to GDV, loan to gross development value. Some people will call it a done up value, but the ter correct terminology for this is gross development value. This is the value of the property after the work has been completed. Now, um, what they'll look at is a loan to GDV of maybe 65%. Part of that will go towards the acquisition of the property, the acquisition funding, and then whatever remains will contribute towards the um, the build cost. Now, this does mean that you might be able to get 100% of the build costs, but it very much depends how it all fits in line with the gross development value and the maximum loan to GDV, which we usually I put in is a, about 65%. Sometimes it's as low as 55, depending on the lender. But there we go. There's that is six different types of bridging finance that you can use to be a bit more creative, shall we say, with your purchases. So just to recap, number one was an acquisition bridge. It's a bridge that you're going to use to purchase a property, land, you might use it to uh, buy at auction. Number two was an open market value bridge. This is the bridge that's based on the open market value of the property rather than the purchase price, which means you might be able to put down a little bit less of a deposit. Number three was our refurb bridge. This is when we look at um, the a lump sum day one amount that's slightly higher than the standard 75% max um, loan to value on a bridge because we're incorporating some cash that's gonna go towards the refurbishment, but we're gonna get it all day one because the refurbishment is only very, very light. Number four, that was our delayed completion bridge. This was a bridge based on the uplifted value of a property where the work has already been done in between exchange and completion, and we're basing the bridge off of the open market value again. Number five was our cross-collateralized bridge. This is a bridge that, you, that utilizes the equity in your existing portfolio in order to cover the deposit so you don't have to put down a cash deposit. And the bonus one, number six, was development finance. And this is where we borrow um, an amount day one to go towards the, um, the cost of purchasing the property and then stage payments to contribute, contribute should I say, towards the, um, the bill costs as well. So there you have it. There are six ways uh, or six different types of bridging finance that you can use. Hopefully this video is really, really helpful for you guys. Um, if it was, please comment below, let me know. Let me know if you've tried any of these types of bridging uh, before, any problems you've come across. 
Um, and don't forget to go and follow me on Instagram at the Sam Norris and drop me a direct message. Let me know if you've watched the video and what you thought. As I said before, guys, if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button so that you, uh, you're you told every time one of these new videos pops up. But for now, thanks ever so much for your time. It's much appreciated and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.